I'm James Stoko and I am a salmon fishing guide on the mighty time and a salmon fishing fanatic for the last 25 years and I have the greatest job on this planet introducing new people and seasoned pros to this river and these fish. giving away my secrets. I told you previously I can't give everything away. So for me, it's, it's critical when it comes to fly choice not to give yourself too much to think about. If you have a box full of 100 different patterns, you're gonna stand and stare at it and you're just gonna constantly think, I need to change, I need to change. Try and narrow it down to four to five patterns that might work at different times of the year, different sizes, different dressings, might be a tube fly, might be a dress fly. So I look at the water conditions when I'm going down. Early season, springtime. Water's gonna be a bit bigger, it's gonna be a bit colder. Let's go with something a little bit heavier and larger because we want to get that fly deep. So tube flies, anything from your typical cascade, which everybody loves to use, it's a good fly. Anything from a cascade to a, a, a D-monkey, black and yellow, I love using a, a red flamethrower on this river. This river has a slight peaty tinge to it. It doesn't really matter what time of the year it is, spring, summer, autumn. I'll change the size of the fly, but red in this river shows up really well. Same with orange, because that slight peaty stain, it just seems to stand out. Obviously, depending on what spectrum of light the fish see in, it definitely stands out to them. You could use it on other rivers, but for some reason, when you come to the time, cascades, flamethrowers, Stoko shrimps, anything like that sort of colour works really well. But for spring, like I say, you can't go wrong with a tube fly. Nice cascade or a flamethrower. I, I wouldn't go too far from that. Or, or black and yellow, anything with a bit black and yellow in, because the black really silhouettes. If you've got a really bright day or cloudy sky, it really silhouettes um, from the fish looking down below. We have to remember when we're looking at flies and fish, we're looking down into dark water. These fish are looking up. So if you can use something that silhouettes, it's often a good shout. Right, summertime. Summertime is my favorite time to fish because the sea trout are in. And I will always, no matter what the height of the water, I will always fish a dropper. Point fly again, RS Cascade, hands down my favorite pattern from Fulham Mill. Use it all the time. I will start with that, whether it's myself or guests. Stoko shrimp, orange, maybe like a size 10 to a size 12. And on the dropper, I will always have a crafty or an Arndilly Fancy on. Tendencies, if I'm fishing a full floating line, I'll have 12 foot a leader. At eight foot from the fly line tip, I'll have a crafty or an Arndilly Fancy. And then on the point fly, usually Stoko Shrimp or a, an RS Cascade. If we fish the pool through quick, I'll go a lot bigger and I'll fish something like a mini sun ray just to give us a little bit of diversity. If I've got two people fishing with me when I'm guiding, We'll just mix things up. I never ever fish the same bit of water twice with the same fly. You have to change it up. Yes, fish might move into the pool, but it does no harm. Just keep bringing the changes. You might use something totally different than you'd ever think about using in low clear water, but use it. Whether you change the depth of it, the size of the fly, but always keep it working, keep it moving, give it a bit of life. I will never fish a bit of water without even a slow figure of eight, or slightly faster draw. Nice little strip or roly-poly. Just keep those flies moving. Stoat's tails, really good. I mean, you can tell from the box, I keep it very limited, very limited. I look at this and I've got maybe four or five point flies and two to three droppers. And I just keep rotating them. And sometimes you'll find like a, what I call a deadly duo, the dream team. And you've got a lot of confidence in it. So if you've got confidence in a setup of two flies, that you've caught fish on, use it. If it's a similar condition, use it. If you don't catch anything, you know it's worked previously. The fish just aren't there or they're not in the mood. Autumn fishing, another one of my favorites, just because there's a lot of fish in this system. A lot of the fish will be colored up, but they can be really angry and aggressive. If you get a dip in temperature, specifically if it's freezing, 
those big male fish will get really angry and you cannot go wrong with a mini snelder. Same again, full of mil mini snelder, nothing too big. I don't like fishing huge and I will fish that on a very fast tip, a really short leader and I will draw and pause. And when I'm talking about drawing and pausing, I'll just retrieve a bit of line, good five second pause. I'm not guaranteeing it, but a lot of the time the fish will take on the pause. It's as if they've got that instinctive reaction that whatever it's chasing is just stopped for a split second. Now's the opportunity, let's have it. I'll always sink and draw it. Same again, red stogo shrimp, red in the back end, always seems to get a better reaction. And we've tested it, we've done trials on the river, tried different colored flies and red for some reason gets such an aggressive reaction. Maybe because the male fish have really big claret and red spots on them and the male fish get angry at it or the fem female fish are just looking for that color for some reason, I don't know. But red in the back end really gets the fish going and I love using them. And it won't be very often that you won't see us fishing with a red fly. Might sound boring, might sound repetitive, but if it works, use it. If it ain't broke, don't change it. Another thing that comes into play with, with salmon fishing, and it's a critical thing, temperature of the water and height. And people often stumble when they come to fly choice. And the best thing to remember is, the bigger and dirtier the water, the bigger and brighter the fly. The lower and clearer the water, the smaller and sparser the fly. If you follow that, you will catch more fish. And again, it's definitely a confidence thing, but it is tried and tested. And I've been doing that rigorously for my guiding over the last six years and the fishing previous to that, and it works. And just remember that, bigger and dirtier, bigger and brighter, lower and clearer, smaller and sparser. And if you think you could fish smaller when it's low and clear, fish smaller, because those fish can see. As long as it silhouettes above them, they will see it and hopefully they will take it. But just remember, fishing in the summer, in low water, you want a really long, long leader. That masterclass leader from Fuller Mill is absolutely perfect because it's got a smaller diameter, so you get the same strength, but the fish just can't see it as much. Not that they're totally line shy, but when you're using small 14s and 16s, you want thin, thin leader. And it just turns the fly over better and the flies seem to fish better. One thing I will say is when I'm fishing fluorocarbon, I don't like fishing the flies on a loop because it creates a lot of friction when you're playing a fish. And the last thing you want to do is lose a fish, but also have the fish have the fly in its mouth once it's smashed you. So just a standard leader, standard knot, and I always fish a dropper. When it gets to the summertime and it warms up, or even today, for example, full floating line, long leader, two flies, you can't go wrong.